I think it was year nine, and we had this competition, and I drew this sick off wolf. A sick off wolf? Yeah, it was sick. You know, oh. like, <laughs> like, cool man. I'm too old to say that, aren't I? Take that out. No, that's Edit that, edit that out. <laughs> Do you mean sick AF? A sick as F. Hello. Hello, and welcome to A Creative Truth. I'm Sophie Berry, aspiring author and aggressive sleep talker. And I'm Benjamin Simons, composer, up-and-coming Twitch streamer and ham-fisted model maker. A Creative Truth is a podcast by creatives, for creatives and aspiring creatives and everyone in between. Each week we invite one of our friends or friendly acquaintances to join us and have a chat about the harsh reality of breaking into their industry. This week we're joined by our wonderful friend Emily Martin. Emily is an art and design educator, running workshops for adults and children with Cut, Glue, Make, Do and her Think It, Make It club. An all-round creative gal who dabbles in illustration, design and photography. She also works as creative-in-chief for her family business, Postcard Models. We have the pleasure of getting to spend loads of time with her as she's also Ben's brother's fiancé. Let's roll the intro and find out more about how Emily made her passions her business. Emily, thank you so much for joining us. It's a beautiful evening and it's our absolute pleasure to have you with us. Thank you for having me with you too. I'm very excited. Oh, so. we're so excited too. Um, we We start the podcast the same way every single time. Um, and it's to take our listener right back to the start of things for you. So where did you grow up and what was it like? Oh, so, well, I grew up in a little village in Kent, but it's just outside of Canterbury. Mm-hmm. But it's called Bridge. Um, it was very nice, just surrounded by fields and we had lots of walks. And we, like my sister and I spent most of our time outside and Canterbury itself is a, you know, a nice place too. But Yeah, definitely. I think like me, you have a really close relationship with your sister. Has, yeah. As things have gone on, have you been involved in creative projects together or do you keep your lives quite separate? Yeah, she she's a brilliant painter. Like she can paint like animals very well, whereas I'm absolutely terrible at animals. Like always been awful. I can draw like a googly eyed like bird or something. But <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not accurate. Whereas Jenny is like far more accurate. Um I bet you're a damn sight better at animals than I am. God damn. <laughs> I'm pretty goddamn awful. <laughs> I found a drawing that I did of uh, my old dog, but the eyes, like I did one very, very small, like minute, and then the other was massive. Oh so it's just like the, the weirdest drawing. But like creative wise, we haven't like combined, but now we're kind of doing these new, like think it, make it workshops. My sister's a science teacher. Um, so she's probably going to get involved with some of those kind of things as well. So oh, kind of that's very STEM cool. or STEAM, just like science, technology. Yeah, amazing. Uh, you know, that one. Those are right. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the other one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember what your first jobs were? My first probably ever, ever job, I I used to bake some cakes for my uh, my granny's cousin. She was called Daphne. That doesn't surprise me at all that that was your first job. (laughs) (laughs) That wasn't like a real, I was probably like seven, you know, trying to make like a couple couple of quid on the block. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Get a curly whirly at the weekend. (laughs) You know, (laughs) drop around a cake to old Daphne. Um, And then like I did a newspaper round, mostly like throughout my teenage years at a swimming pool in the uh, cafe making paninis. And I have many a panini scar on my arm. (laughs) Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> so, Scar for life. <laughs> do you remember a moment where you knew that you were going to pursue a creative life? Was that something that you felt from the very beginning, or was there kind of a light bulb? Um, yeah, I probably like definitely more so in like secondary school. Um, I remember, I think it was year nine, and we had this competition, and I drew this sick off wolf. But in, I, I, in my head, I was like, oh, I'm actually all right at this. And before, I never thought I was that good at, like, drawing. Emily, just as an aside, can you repeat it, what it was that you drew? Because I don't think we... Oh, my, yeah, your I don't internet think was our, a bit wobbly then. Yeah. I, I drew a sick-off wolf. 
a sick off wolf yeah it was sick you know oh. like <laughs> like cool man i'm too old to say that aren't i take that out no that's edit that, edit that <laughs> do you mean sick af as sick as f oh my god <laughs> <laughs> and it was entered into competition and i won and it was like the first thing i've ever won like ever oh. and i was like oh that's actually you know wow i'm that's something that I really feel is good. Like I felt good doing it. And, you know, the fact that not that it's all about winning a competition, but it was just nice to be recognized, to be always good at something. Like I felt like I was never really like properly like academic or anything in school. Mm. So it's kind of always like that middle ground. Yeah. You know, like you're not on the, you're not at the bottom. You're not at the top. You're kind of just like there. <laughs> It's so interesting how many creatives seem to feel that like mm-hmm. they're not they're not rock bottom they're not like the kids that don't try um, but they're definitely not in the kind of academic top tier 10% they're no. kind of floating in the middle not quite sure of their direction within an educational institution because yeah. it's so driven by academia um, exactly and then trying to carve your path is, is quite complicated so you were obviously really young when you first realized that was something you really enjoyed doing do you remember mm. what your first steps were in terms of trying to fulfill that later on in you know your first steps to making that a career path for you so I kind of knew I was really enjoying art I like obviously took it for GCSE and A level and I took photography as well um and then I think just during A level I really noticed that I was drawing in a very different way to kind of not how quite a lot of the other people in my class were drawing or painting like everyone Mm. was kind of doing really really beautiful paintings and like very again kind of accurate and I just felt like my style I like to draw very small and I had all these small little sketchbooks I just noticed that I was just more drawn to like illustration Mm. and drawing in that particular style so I was really lucky like my art teacher just really pushed me into that she kind of even though it was I was going kind of off piece to what you know, we were, we were kind of like supposed to do in A level. Yeah. She kind of just let me roll with it. And I think that was like, she just inspired me so much to kind of just go with the flow and really kind of, you know, develop my own style and not feel like I need to kind of go down a path of creating a beautiful kind yeah. of yeah, painting. Yeah, like, like <laughs> classical art. Yeah, no, I, I yeah. totally get that. And I can completely imagine you actually in a classroom <laughs> surrounded by your peers who are creating classical art and you just having a little <laughs> sketch in the corner that's so yeah. cute. <laughs> My so googly eyed dog. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's actually exactly. really nice though because like we've heard someone telling us before how they was they were on a creative course and they were very much being steered towards creating in a way that is the formula to create and that if they were veering off from that then they're doing art wrong um which he found really frustrating but you you obviously got really lucky that you had a a teacher that was that saw something in you that was obviously different but natural and encouraged you to pursue that yeah it was totally amazing like I was so lucky to have her sometimes you get teenagers that have just come out of school and they have a very like prescriptive way of working it's almost like not saying that they're not brilliant to what they're doing but you kind of want to unpick that and see like what they actually want to draw what I think there's no like right or wrong really like within art but I think sometimes because you have to kind of fit it to you know the curriculum which I you know is the school way people assume that you ha- there's a kind of well I must do this to get a good grade but mm. it doesn't so hard to grade because it's subjective <laughs> yeah it sounds like she was the miss honey to your matilda for sure she, she actually was that's a brilliant brilliant way of putting it you guys eh? <laughs> <laughs> emily do you remember what your first paid creative gig or job was i did a lot for free when i was <laughs> young like i did a lot of posters for like bands mm-hmm. and uh the local kind of events going around but i think my first i think i got like a tenor for doing like a newspaper front and it was just a drawing of lots of faces from jeremy kyle uh i don't know why i drew that i know i don't know why it was some kind of indie night and i don't know why i I just drew lots of faces you work on a wonderful array of creative projects from your workshops to your teaching role within an educational institution you also illustrate and take lots of beautiful photos um what where would you say is your creative home in terms of what feels most right to you? 
I, I, I was talking to my mum about this earlier because I just think I've, I've never been able, even though I kind of in school, I was very much like drawn to illustration. Mm-hmm. I love doing photography as well. And I kind of, and I even so when I was doing my degree, um, I just couldn't, I just wanted to experiment with more processes. I always really struggled when it came to like, now you have to put something on a wall. Yeah. Because I love drawing outside and just documenting things that I find really interesting. Mm. I just love uh, an array of things, like mostly obviously drawing, but at the moment, I just really like my camera. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and just photographing mostly kind of nature. But I think that's really, just almost like a nice little therapy thing and trying to document those things that I like and shape and texture at the moment it just seems really focused on photography but then it will change in a year's time it will probably be drawing or printing or you know uh making something with a laser cutter it just I can never like pigeonhole myself into one thing which I don't know whether is a good thing or a bad thing I'm not sure I think it's a good thing do you think possibly if you were stuck with one that your creativity would actually end up being stifled by that and you'd do less? I think that's the thing. I think when, and you probably find that as well, Ben, like when you're working with a piece of music and you're like, oh, I don't know where to go with this. And you feel like you just, you've got creativity in you and you just need to almost put that energy elsewhere. And then you can kind of rethink and go back to it mm-hmm. later. And I think, yeah, I think when something is not necessarily going like, what I planned in my head I'll go do something else or I'll you know I don't know design a poster for an upcoming workshop or I'll do a bit of drawing just to kind of ease my mind off things but yeah it it's hard when you get stuck I think that's a really hard place like a creative rut <laughs> it yeah. sucks but yeah. equally so just kind of doing something else that's creative like cooking or just gardening or yeah I do get the sense I mean well I know I know you so I know (laughs) this to be true but you very much see the beauty in everything really and um I obviously follow you on Instagram as does Ben (laughs) and you you posted a picture the other day of some grass in in the morning light or something and I was like I don't think I've ever loved grass as much as I did (laughs) before I started following you it's so nice um (laughs) So we know you've worked with some pretty high profile clients. Who was the one you were most excited about? Like it's all kind of varied, like with the family business. Um, so my dad is the designer engineer and he designs these amazing models. But um, we made a model for Orlando from the Maccabees, um, really? his book, The Gritter Man, <laughs> yeah. which was very exciting. Like he well, being a big Maccabees fan as well, I was kind of like, <laughs> that was really cool um, just to make something for him. But that was purely just because we loved the book. He didn't, you know, commission us. We did it and he bought it, so which was great. <laughs> That's very but cool. But that kind of how a postcard model started. And then since then, we've just made models. Of, and like recently, I think just getting model kits like into like Hastings Contemporary is great so we've got models in there and we've recently just sold some kits to the Garden Museum I, that I get a real buzz out of thinking like our tiny little business has some model kits and you know an art gallery or so how did the um, Maccabees situation even come about so you had you read the book and you guys made a model inspired by the book and then he saw it or so like my dad made it and I took some photographs of it uh and we created, we like 3D printed because in the book he has a little ice cream fan. And I just tagged him in it on Instagram. And then he uh, DM'd me and it was like, whoa. Hmm. And he was like, do you, mind, do you mind if I repost this? And I was like, uh, yeah, oh my God. <laughs> like he wanted the model. So we we're like, absolutely, yes, take it. So that's obviously an extreme high of working in your business. But yeah. What has been the main struggle of working in the industry that you do? I think, um, as you, you know, there's so many struggles, I think, in the creative industry. But I think it's, like, number one, probably, like, trying to find a place in the whole creative industry, but also, um, like, knowing your worth, like, trying to you know, have that confidence to think like, yeah, what I'm doing is good. Or like what I'm doing is people would be interested in it. That is the hardest part because no one's telling you what the correct thing is. There's no right or wrong. Like it's just trying to value yourself and time and 
like actually how much effort and I think I've definitely and that's where it's just becoming self-employed as well it's just mm. I've definitely un- undervalued myself for a long long time I don't think that um people see people who work in the creative industry as being a business they see us as just being mm. people who have this thing that we do that they would like to have some of that's really hard it's like and trying to you almost want a camera just filming you to be like this is how much work I've done on it this is how long I've worked and this is the mm. process that I have to go through to to get to the outcome it doesn't even necessarily matter like even if like what some of the type the work that I do I can do it really quickly but that doesn't mm. mean that it's not hard to do like, no it takes a long time to get to the point where you can do something fast for somebody. And you find yeah. it quite arduous too. It's not just Sometimes, like, yeah. so it's not, I mean, you you could pr- you could say, I'm going to charge you an hour, but I mean, there's some work that you've done, which has been the worst hour of your life. <laughs> what do you love about what you do? Oh, so many things. Like, I think I feel very lucky to be in the position that I'm in at the moment um, to definitely just share creativity, especially through like running through my workshops I think and it pushes me to be more creative as well because I'm always kind of looking at things that I'm like right what can I do for this workshop or what can I show them that's a new skill that maybe they haven't ever seen before Mm -hmm. um and then just seeing like genuine reactions genuine excitement and you know they take something home that they're really pleased with or yeah I just enjoy sharing and teaching and yeah it's pretty I love it (laughs) obviously we're in the midst of a pandemic at the moment Mm -hmm. as someone who's recently gone freelance how have you found it and how has it affected your business you know I kind of like I got to a point where I could say I've kind of established like a good kind of community group for Mm -hmm. running workshops I think luckily I ran you know I started running some in August but there were six months where I didn't run anything Mm. um but in that case, you know, I didn't have my workshops. Postcard models really picked up because lots of people were at home and wanting to be creative at home. So mm. it was kind of amazing having, you know, two kind of businesses going. And actually, you know, sometimes I'm spending a lot more time running my workshops. But obviously in this scenario of this 2020, I couldn't do that. <laughs> so yeah. postcard models really kind of picked up, which was great. But cool. I think... I really just missed like working you know like teaching and seeing the kids that I normally see and seeing the adults that I normally see it I kind of really miss them work always comes in ebbs and flows I think Mm. definitely with being self-employed it's never like consistent uh, you know yeah you'll have like oh my god I've been so busy for this month or week or you know Mm. it's it's all kind of relative and then sometimes you have like a week that you're like Hmm, what should I do <laughs> and that's that's always like sometimes quite an exciting position but I guess you know 2020 didn't allow that so yeah my head felt too heavy to be like oh, what, yeah. what do I share or yeah. what do I do it just it was really odd situation to be in I don't know if you felt the same but yeah it was yeah <laughs> it was strange well still was strange but yeah, yeah, you know it's been a very strange year so in an alternate reality, then, what do you think that you'd be doing with, with yourself if it wasn't any of the things that you currently do? I love music so much that I would love to be in a band or really, I, just, I don't think my brain was good for it. Like, I just couldn't, you know, I don't know. There's something, I think it was like the connection between my brain and my fingers, which I'm sure <laughs> if I just practiced <laughs> it would come. And I did really try for like a solid since primary school to secondary school Mm. what (laughs) instrument were you learning guitar guitar and I did try a bit of trumpet but I just music really I don't know I don't know what I'd do without music but I think just have that ability to play an instrument I don't I don't think it's too late for you Emily honestly (laughs) Emily (laughs) let's start a band (laughs) (laughs) I can play Postman Pat on trumpet perfect (laughs) I I, I I really got an eclectic (laughs) mix of music so be prepared it's just uh, the love for music I love like my brain's ability to memorize lyrics it's probably just that's my brain's capacity is just lyrics Mm. (laughs) I've reached full capacity (laughs) (laughs) reached capacity (laughs) nothing else nothing else actually sticks it is such a frustrating thing though because for me I mean Ben can attest to this the first thing I do every morning is put music on it's like lifeblood and you yeah and I 
certainly imagine in the shower that I'm in a band or I'm singing along mm. and I'm on a stage, but you know, just doesn't happen one, to some people. Yeah. Well, actually, <laughs> Why does it happen? I, I think know. music. Why? Really? But then I don't. I, you guys have a love for music that I don't have. It's very interesting, actually, because yeah, we've talked weird. about that. Like how Emily and I are obsessed with it, and we research it, and we love finding new stuff, <laughs> and we talk about it all the time, and we're just playing it all the time. And you're not so much like that, but you have obviously the technical ability and talent. That I we wanna, don't. Yeah, I want to. <laughs> I want to make it. But I don't want to listen to it particularly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's really that's really interesting, isn't it? Mm, that's yeah. It's it's like two parallel weird. Yeah, I always just fall back on stuff that I've liked for years and years. I very rarely find something new that I like. Mm. Yeah. What did you say, Sophie, about your life? Do you say some life yeah, blood? Your life. Well, yeah. You, if something's like kind of like sustains you. Yeah. You it, you I know? think that's it. I don't think. Well, music just makes you feel better in any circumstance, but also it's that one kind of only thing that you can listen to or, or a song will just pop up on the radio and you're like, oh God, I haven't heard. And, it, it, and that memory will just bring oh, back. It's yeah. like smell, isn't it? Yeah. It's mm-hmm. like music has that link to memories. And I think that's pretty... It's miraculous, isn't it? It's that, yeah. it's the magic of being a human and it's such a visceral thing. It's, I mean, we know that it is one of those things that is historically one of our kind of basis instincts is to tap to music to understand it to feel rhythm um and i think the thing about music is that you don't always have to feel really happy or or glad to be hearing it but it's always a comfort so even if you're Mm. sad it's because you want to feel sad in that moment you're listening to it and you're quite you're indulging that feeling it's yeah yeah. gone off on a bit of a tangent there but emily this is a tricky one what Uh-oh. is your definition of a successful life? Being happy, which I know is not always the case. Like, you're going to have tough times and you're going to have good times. No doubt what happens. Mm. But I think having a close family and close relationship with your family and friends. Yeah. I think there's so much, like, especially in the creative industry, to be like, to be successful, you must have... 15,000 followers on Instagram and you need to be working with this person and this person Mm -hmm. and it's like it's all relative to what you've achieved you know like someone else's success is never going to be the same as your success like no and I think that's such a problem with like social media because you look at it and think oh well I'm not ever going to be like that you know I'm not ever going to be as big as this person or that person Mm -hmm. yeah but I think it's such a lesson and I'm not saying I'm perfect at it I'm definitely not but it's like just to be happy and think actually that's really amazing that I've achieved that and well done even if it's like you know booking up 10 spaces in a workshop like good (laughs) yay Mm -hmm. but But, but fundamentally you're saying that it's actually just having a good family network and close friends and that's that's pretty much the bulk of it yeah and just you know I know that's yeah, you know, we're lucky to have that. Yes, um, true. Definitely. That sense of safety, a nice yeah, home. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. I think if you've got that and, you know, you have access to places, you know, just being outside can make you happy. All right, last question. Um, what advice would you give your younger self? And you could pick sort of any moment to go back to in your, where well, any point in time you like, that you could give yourself a bit of advice when would it be and what would you tell yourself? I think there's only a recent thing maybe that I've learned is just you, you don't, you know, you can be nice, but you can also say no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to that's so important. And I think uh, I am a classic person to always say yes to something, even though I don't really want to do it. Mm. And it doesn't really fit in with my values or what I believe in. But I've said yes because I feel uncomfortable. Or feel like I have to because I'm, you know, to be a people pleaser. Yeah, I think solid. people, I think people confuse the ideas of compliance and kindness all the yeah. time. You don't have to be compliant all the time to be a kind person. Yeah, um, you can be inherently kind and say piss off, mate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just, no, exactly <laughs> or just no thank you yeah. just no thank you <laughs> yeah no no slowly back away i can't but... see emily telling anyone to no. piss off <laughs> <laughs> piss off emily 
We've come to the part of the podcast where the floor is entirely yours. It's called Plug Yourself. So we want to know what you're working on and your socials. Hit it. Plug Yourself. Plug it real good. Hit it. Okay, so, well, currently I am running workshops, fingers crossed, um, and you can find me my workshop pages. I'm all over the the social interweb. But Think It, Make It, which is our kind of new workshops that we're running. So you can find that through a link on Cuckley Make Do. And then you can follow our family postcard models business at postcard models. And we do have a Twitter. I'm not very good at it, <laughs> but that's also at postcard models. <laughs> I just like lots of Sophie and Ben stuff and just retweet it. That's all I'm doing on Twitter. Yeah, you should definitely go follow but- them. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> Emily, it's been quite beautiful having you with us this evening. The sun is glaring in my face now. Yeah. <laughs> and it's quite painful, but it's been absolutely <laughs> lovely. <laughs> um, and we'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for, for having me. Bye. See you later. See you later. Bye. Bye-bye. If you'd like to find out more about us, you can find us on Twitter at A Creative Truth or on Instagram at A Creative Truth Podcast. We'd love to read any feedback you have, so if you have a moment, please leave a review. And if you've enjoyed today's podcast, please tell your pals. We'd also love to hear your thoughts about who you'd like to hear from in the future. See you next time. <laughs>